Hi, my mission is to help parents walk their conscious and mindful parenting journey and help give them information that they can use as they're making healthcare decisions so that they have confidence to step forward with courage when it comes time to help out their kids. My name is Doc Edwards and this is One Belly Wednesday. What we're gonna be talking about today is congratulations or maybe surprise you're expecting. First trimester is such an amazing time. I'll tell you that I have had both of those experiences where I was told, uh, we're gonna have a baby. And I've also had the, oh my goodness, we're gonna have a baby. And so both of those as a father have been vastly different. Um, the, the times that weren't so exciting and the times where I felt unprepared and very nervous and very scared usually had a lot to do with just my own personal um, situation, whether it was uh, you know, looking at college or, or whatever. Um, the other times that were really exciting was where I had been preparing my body, um, my partner had been preparing her body. And as we looked at this opportunity that we had in front of us to raise a child, uh, we were very, very, very stoked about that. Um, especially one of those uh, times uh, we had struggled, uh, really, really struggled to, to conceive a child. And so uh, being able to get over that hump was something that was really, really important in, in my own personal life story. So there is definitely something that I want to talk about first, and that is my, my very, very good friend, Dr. Marsha Schaefer. It's her life's work talking about this uh, fertility journey, mainly through about having people create healthy cells. She has a really awesome phrase that I like to repeat to my clients, which is that pregnancy is effectively a side effect of good health. And so if you're making really good cells on your insides, then two cells trying to get together to make a new baby is a much easier process for the body physiologically. So let's fast forward to the part where we're there and you're finding out, okay, so I've been missing my cycle. Let's go ahead and take a test. And then another one and then a third and then a fourth. And yeah, that line is definitely there. That definitely says pregnant. Uh, and it just keeps on getting darker the more you take the test. Um, so here we are now in this journey and we're going to have this baby. And so all the things that are going to be developing right in this first trimester, this is where the building blocks get laid down. This is probably the most important time in your child's development because after about 12 weeks, things are pretty much baked in. We have all the organs are forming, all the body parts are forming. The brain is connecting into all the different portions, all of the, the, the little cells are growing and dividing and specializing organs and cells. Even by the time that you have seven, uh, seven weeks along, the pancreas is formed and starting to make these enzymes that are going to trim out the organs so the liver is liver shaped and the heart is heart shaped and it continues that process. By five weeks, you've got the, the eye has started to form. These little buds are going to be the arms and the hands, the legs, and the feet. You've got the uh, three weeks, the, the heart is there and the, the brain and the heart cells are communicating and sending little cellular messages back and forth to each other. They get trained really, really early. Um, all these things happen super early in the process in that embryonic stage. And you don't even really feel baby floating around in there. You know, baby can implant. And so you might start because of the hormone shift that's now going to happen, start feeling sensations of nausea or you get really, really tired. That's what I want to address. So as a chiropractor who takes care of a lot of expecting moms and couples through their, their conception journey, there are a few things that I always like to point out to moms if they're in that state. One is that if we look in terms of, uh, Dr. Schaefer likes to call them ecosystems, and I think it's a really smart way of looking at it. But there's a lay of the land internally that really needs to be managed. It has a lot to do with how your body utilizes things like blood sugar, how it's utilizing the oxygen carrying molecule we call hemoglobin, and then also how we utilize the, the idea that your cells have this ability to pull in the sugar uh, through things like insulin. It also has a lot to do with how effectively your body's using oxygen. There's something that we call pH, and pH is a uh, chemical signature for whether something is acidic or basic. Now your actual blood itself has a really tight pH range. Uh, that's not going to vary very much, but the spaces, if you have ever heard that your body's 75% water, this is where we're talking about. The spaces in between the cells, it's the spaces inside the cells. That's the place where your pH ought to be slightly alkaline. Uh, it changes throughout the day, especially at nighttime. If you're going to pee on a stick and look to see what your body's pH is, it should be acidic 
at the very first waking void, you know, the first time you go pee, because your body's been detoxing overnight. That's when our, our organs do that rest and repair process. But throughout the day, what we want to see is this push toward a little more alkalinity, because what that does is that tells us a little signal about chemically what's happening inside the body. See, one of the big things that we have is, is oxygen versus carbon dioxide. And oxygen, as it's floating around and bound into your cells, is a healthy thing for your brain. Your brain really needs it. It needs glucose, it needs oxygen, and it loves activity in order to stay healthy. Well, now you've got two brains floating around in there, and you're really using a lot of these reserves that your body's had in order to help make the building blocks for that little baby. So making sure that you're carrying enough iron is also one of the, the key things that we look for in our office. Um, I have a, you know, when, when we do an assessment with our, our patients, we have this thing called a pulse oximeter. And they even have these on Fitbits now so that you can track what your oxygen consumption is. If you find that you're really tired during your pregnancy, that's a handy thing to look at is to look to see what your pulse ox is. If you're down in the, the mid 90s or my goodness, even lower than that, there's a chance that your body's not getting the iron it needs. Now, I don't really wanna get into diet and nutrition on this one belly Wednesday. Um, just do understand that one of my key founding philosophies is that there's a reason why different diets exist for different people. I have a way of looking at it that has a lot to do with how the nerve system works. It's based off of Dr. Nick Gonzalez's work, whether someone is sympathetic dominant, so fight flight dominant, or parasympathetic, rest and, and relax and digest dominant. Um, so what I try to do is find, find people's diets that you know, guide them towards what I'm seeing dominant in their nerve system. Um, but some people will need some like some meat in order to be able to get that iron base. Some people are on a vegetarian or vegan diet, and so they're really going to need to supplement with something like Gaia or Floridex uh, in order to meet that need too. But pulse ox is a really good way of looking at it. The other thing that I look at too is chest expansion. When someone's first six ribs here, since the time you're a little embryo, the motion in there has been telling your brain how quickly they needed to move in order to tell the respiratory centers of your brain how often you need to breathe. So if you aren't breathing well because you're tight here in the chest, that's one of those areas where chiropractic can help a lot just by making sure that the middle back and these ribs are moving correctly. The other thing that we look at in terms of oxygenation is how well is the sympathetic and parasympathetic system balanced? If you're in a stress mode, like all of us are coming out of the great pause and you're not breathing really well, you're breathing you know, shallowly and so that means that you've gotta take, I don't know, 20 breaths in a minute in order to oxygenate your brain, then that over time tightens up those muscles. It makes you crepe your shoulders up. Your head starts carrying forward because you're like, ha, 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 ha. Or, you know, maybe you wear those little tight skinny jeans and you're just like sucking in all the time. And so you become a chest breather and not used to breathing with your belly. There's a lot of things that we're looking at as far as body work goes as chiropractors looking at you in this first trimester. The next thing too that we talk about with ecosystem, and again, Dr. Schaefer's work has been so key to me understanding this, is understanding the difference there between what your blood sugar is doing. So a lot of moms will go through a glucose test and something called A1C. Now, A1C is a measure for the molecule that carries oxygen called hemoglobin. And one of the things that it's doing is it helps us understand how receptive your body is to insulin. The ability for your body to take blood sugar in has a lot to do with the insulin sensitivity of your cells. Some people have heard of the term insulin resistance. What insulin resistance is, is an ability for your body to take that glucose and utilize it so your body does the next smartest thing sends it up through the liver, the liver converts the glucose into something that's storable, um, and it, it, if the liver gets full of that, then it throws it into the body in terms of adipose, AKA fat. And so that's why sometimes if you look at people who are type two diabetic, one of the reasons for that that you'll hear doctors talk about is something called insulin resistance. That's really important as we're talking about pregnancy too, because some people say, oh, now I'm eating for two in this first trimester. No, you're not. That baby is like only going to be the size of like the end of my finger by the end of this first trimester. It doesn't need all the extra calories necessarily. What it needs is good dense calories. It needs the, the right amount of nutrients. We have a conversation uh, right now about these, these what we call midline defects or tethered oral tissues where you've got these lip ties and tongue ties. And one of the 
prevailing theories on this is that there are certain nutrients that we were always told we need to have extra of that might be creating this kind of issue. Something that we call folic acid was something that originally the March of Dimes really put a big campaign together to help prevent spinal cord defects. Something called spina bifida occulta is a crippling disease for a lot of children. And so in the United States, they fortified all the cereal, fortified all the bread, put tons of folic acid in there because it's cheap. But the problem is, is that some people can't convert it well. And so what we want is folate. That's the properly converted form of, of what folic acid is supposed to turn into, but not everybody can do it. And so maybe there may be a side effect in the correlation with people who have these midline defects and uh, in that specific genetic condition. So um, we like leafy green vegetables for things like folate. Uh, there's a lot of ways to get that. The other one too is choline. Choline seems to be emerging as a more and more important nutrient. Uh, I just listened to a podcast about this too that affirmed something that I learned in one of Dr. Schaefer's seminars. Uh, is something that's found in eggs. And um, it may be more important than folic acid in order to help develop the nerve system. So um, these are kind of the places where we get a little bit outside of the, the pure nerve communication between the mom's brain and the mom's body. Um, but really what we're trying to do is provide baby, the basic building blocks to help as baby wires that connection in as well. Um, finally, the last thing that I want to leave you with as we're talking about you know, baby and internal ecosystems is something that my friend Jay Warren talks about. This first trimester can be stressful, especially now that we're coming out of the great pause. Some of you guys, depending on where you live, are still in the thick of it, and I know that's tough. Um, not every baby comes into a situation where the parents are super excited about it, uh, and that affects baby. Uh, one of the things that Dr. Warren talks about and some of his affirmations in the American Perinatal Psychology Association is that it's really important for baby to understand two things. One is that you're in a stressful situation, that there's going to be a resolution. There's going to be an end to the stress. That's so important. Sometimes stress is unavoidable. Sometimes you have to move. Sometimes you lose your job. Sometimes things are less than ideal in a relationship. And being able to communicate that to baby that, hey, listen, right now we're having a stressful time. It's not always going to be like this does seem to matter. The second thing that is super duper important as we're talking about that communication with baby is two words, welcomed and wanted. If you can do that simple affirmation five times during your day, just tuning into baby and say, baby, you're welcome and you are wanted. That bonding process, not only between mom and baby, but also between dad and baby can be really, really instrumental in helping that baby feel welcomed and wanted so that as we look forward to the growth and development of that child, we're doing it in a place of peace and calm and focus and love. So if you like what I'm doing here, make sure you tell a friend about it. Think about who needs to hear this right now and send it over to them. Say, hey, listen to this One Belly Wednesday stuff. He's got something to say and I think that you'd like it. I'll look forward to talking with you next week. We're doing some things here locally, really excited about. Uh, those of you who are local to Southwest Florida, we're having our very first Pathways event. I'm super stoked about it. It's our Dads and Games event. It's our post-Father's Day celebration we're hosting out at Millennial Brewing Company, and we're gonna have a blast with that one. I'm also, uh, in, within our Pathways group, we're having very interesting conversations at the end of the month. Um, last Friday of the month, I come in for lives, and we've got a very special treat for those of you who are already part of our Pathways Connect Southwest Florida group. Um, we're gonna be talking about COVID and vaccinations. So um, those people who wanna tune into that who are already part of our Pathways group, uh, I'll be doing it Friday at six. Have a wonderful day.